everyone welcome back to microbio solutions today we are going to discuss about human immunodeficiency viruses or hiv these are the basic selenium features of hiv it belongs to the family retroviridae under the subgroup lentivirus and it is spherical in nature which has got an enveloped rna virus or it is also called as an enveloped rna virus because of the genetic material and it measures about 90 to 200 nanometer and has got an icosahedral nucleocapsid and also it has got a reverse transcriptase enzyme which is seen attached to the genetic material that is rna so this is the schematic diagram representing hiv virus first it has got an rna genome you can see in the center and attaching to that there is a reverse transcriptase enzyme and the covering of the genetic material in any virus it is called as a nucleocapsid because it has got a capsid which is covering the nucleic acid material or the genetic material the nucleocapsid of hiv virus is generally labeled as p24 this is an antigen which can be detected in blood sample or the serum sample of the infected patient and covering to the nucleocapsid there is p18 antigen that denotes the outer shell of nucleocapsid p18 denotes the outer shell of nucleocapsid and this is an enveloped virus so this has got an enveloped glycoprotein spike that is gp120 and a transmembrane pedicle glycoprotein that is gp41 all these antigens and glycoproteins are important in detection or determination of the hiv viral antigen or antibodies in the sera of infected patient so you can see the middle there is rna genome attaching to that there is a reverse transcriptase enzyme covering to the genetic material that is a nucleocapsid and covering the nucleocapsid there is an outer shell of nucleocapsid which has got a p18 antigen and covering the outer shell of nucleocapsid there is an envelope and in the envelope inside it has got a transmembrane pedicle glycoprotein that is gp41 and the envelope glycoprotein spike which projects outside the envelope that is gp120 so the main feature of envelope which gives a spherical structure to the virus measures about 90 to 120 nanometer in size and inside there is a nucleocapsid which is an outer icosahedral shell and inner cone shaped core this is the basic structure of the hiv virus and the genome that is the rna genome is diploid in nature composed of two identical single stranded positive sense rna copies and in association with the viral rna is the reverse transcriptase enzyme which is a characteristic feature of retroviruses and then the lipoprotein envelope which consists of a lipid derived from the host cell membrane and glycoprotein which is virus coded so the lipoprotein envelope the lipid part is derived from the host cell membrane and the protein part derived from the viral particle so the spikes constitute the main surface component of the virus which bind to cd4 receptors on the host cell the spikes or enhances the attachment of cd4 receptors to the host cell and the major genes and antigens present in viral hiv virus the genome of hiv contains three structural genes namely gap fold and n and there are some non structural genes as well that is tat nef reg etc but then the structural genes that is gap fold n are the important one when comes to the pathogenesis of the hiv virus so there are the genes encoding for structural protein this gap will determine the core and shell of the virus it is also expressed as p55 or precursor protein and the next gene is n or env which determine the synthesis of envelope glycoprotein 160 and cleaves to form gp120 and gp41 and gp120 is the major envelope antigen you have seen 
GP120 is the glycoprotein spike which was projecting outside and GP41 was the transmembrane pedicle glycoprotein. So, N gene codes for the develop GP160 which then further cleave to GP120 and then GP41 and GP120 is the major envelope antigen which is projecting outside. The last one is pole which calls for the polymerase, reverse transcriptors and other viral enzymes such as proteases and endonucleases required for the synthesis of viral antigens or HIV antigens. And the major antigens of HIV, there are envelope antigens, namely spike antigen or GP120 and transmembrane pedicle protein that is GP41. And then next come the shell antigen that is nucleocapsid protein P18 and core antigen, principal core antigen is P24 and other core antigen includes P15 and P55. And next one is polymerase antigen P31, P51 and P66. Moving on to the pathogenesis of HIV virus. So HIV virus has got a receptor it is also called as a viral receptors. Receptor for the HIV virus is mainly CD4 cells in human body. Primarily CD4 plus T lymphocytes. Also B lymphocytes, monocytes and macrophages are susceptible to get infected with HIV. And specific binding of the virus to the CD4 receptor is by GP120. When we were discussing about the structure of HIV virus, we have seen the transmembrane pedicle glycoprotein and the envelope glycoprotein 120. So, the envelope glycoprotein 120 is responsible for the specific binding of the virus to the CD4 receptor. And there will be cell fusion by the transmembrane pedicle glycoprotein or GP41. Then the infected patient will come in contact with the susceptible host through blood or tissues and binding of the virus GP120 to CD4 cells of the host. So initially if there is an infected patient will come in contact with the susceptible host through blood transfusion or tissue transfusion or, or organ transfusion such as and the binding of GP120 to the CD4 cells and fusion of the cell will happen by transmembrane pedicle glycoprotein and the replication process of the virus will start. That is the first step is uncoating of genetic material. Uncoating of HIV genome and which will be internalized into the cell. And then viral reverse transcriptors enzyme will be transcribed to double stranded RNA. So primarily HIV virus has a RNA genetic material with the help of this reverse transcriptors will be transcribed to a double stranded DNA. This double stranded DNA genome will be integrated into the host cell for multiplication, further multiplication and later this virus causes lysis of the cell and release of progeny virion. And in an infected individual, HIV can be isolated from blood, lymphocytes, semen, cervical secretions, saliva, tears and breast milk. The clinical features of the infected patients includes acute HIV infection, asymptomatic or latent infection, persistent generalized lymphadenopathy or PGL, AIDS related complex and the final stage AIDS, acute immunodeficiency syndrome. The first stage or the acute HIV which starts within three to six weeks of infection with virus which will present with fever, myalgia, headache, malaise, sore throat, diarrhea and rashes. At this stage viral nucleic acid can be detected from patient sample. Second stage is asymptomatic infection where there will be phase of symptomless infection but the patient sample will show positive HIV antibodies. And the third stage is persistent generalized lymphadenopathy or PGL where the patient will manifest with enlarged lymph nodes 
which will persist for at least three months. And it could be benign and it can progress to AIDS related complex or ARC. Next is ARC or AIDS related complex where the patient will have fatigue, unexplained fever, persistent diarrhea and marked weight loss. Opportunistic infections include oral candidiasis, herpes zoster, tuberculosis, etc. And this ARC patients are severely ill and many will progress to AIDS. AIDS is the end stage of HIV infection that is irreversible breakdown of immune defense mechanism of the host. And the respiratory symptoms includes dry cough, dyspnea, fever, gastrointestinal system infections include herpetic stomatitis, gingivitis, hairy leukoplakia, Kaposi's sarcoma, CNS manifestations include toxoplasmosis and cryptococcal meningitis, malignancies includes Kaposi's sarcoma, lymphoma and which can even lead to dementia. And there are certain opportunistic infections which is seen associated with AIDS namely parasitic, mycotic, bacterial etc. So the parasitic infections include toxoplasmosis, cryptosporidiosis, isosporiasis and generalized strongyloidiasis. Mycotic or fungal infections include pneumocystis durovisi, candidiasis, cryptococcosis, aspergillosis and histoplasmosis. Bacterial includes mycobacterial in infections including tuberculosis and non-tuberculosis infection, salmonellosis, campylobacter infection, nocardia and actinomyces and legionellosis. Viral infections include cytomegalovirus infection, herpes simplex virus and malignancies, Kaposi sarcoma and lymphomas, both Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's type. That is about today's lecture. If you have any doubts, please post in the comment section. Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.